Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Reflection on the Rock on uh, Wednesday, uh, July 6th. And we're gathering uh, this this evening to uh, reflect on Psalm 52. And it's, I've picked out the the version that Margaret will often use called The Message, uh, paraphrased by Eugene Peterson. And it's quite... Interesting. Today. It, it, It brings the Bible alive, I think. Wow. So we're going to look at that uh, through the message. But if you're, I just have your Bible out, just uh, advance to uh, Psalm 52, and we'll join in reflecting together. We're also, um, as you know, be in prayer. We're going to lift this up during our time of prayer, but Margaret leaves today. Um, she left at noon for um, a two-week vacation, I believe, in Europe after putting it off for close to three years now. So we wish her all the best and rest and rejuvenation and safe travels. Absolutely. We begin this morning with... Um, this evening. This evening. Right. I have a hard time remembering <laughs> that's that. That's right. Well, people uh, watch it anytime. So. That's true. But in theory, it's evening. <laughs> uh, we begin with our um, prelude, Bring Many Names. refrain for bring many names is our opening prayer. Let us pray. Great living God, never fully known, darkness far beyond our seeing, closer yet than breathing, everlasting home. Hail and Hosanna, great living God. Amen. And as mentioned, our scripture tonight is Psalm 82. Oh. And oh, it's 82, not 52. Sorry. I think I just said 52. Oh. <laughs> I got to get back in the swing of things. There you go. Yeah, you've, I'm still you've been on, on vacation. vacation. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so this is from the message. God calls the judges into the courtroom. God puts all the judges in the dock. Enough! You've corrupted justice long enough. You've let the wicked get away with murder. You're here to defend the defenseless, mm-hmm. to make sure that underdogs get a fair break. Right. Your job is to stand up for the powerless and prosecute all those who exploit them. Yeah. Ignorant judges, head-in-the-sand judges, they haven't a clue what's going on. And now everything's falling apart. The world's coming unglued. (laughs) I appointed you judges, each one of you, deputies of the high God. But you've betrayed your commission. And now you've stripped off your rank, busted. Oh God, give them what they've got coming. Mm -hmm. You've got the whole world in your hands. Hmm. Wow. Eugene Peterson. Yeah. This was years ago. This wasn't like last week. <laughs> he wrote this several years ago and reflected on um, this psalm in a way that uh, kind of brings today into a new kind of uh, perspective. When I was in my undergraduate studies, I was a liberal arts major with emphasis, emphasis in journalism. I was going to be a reporter. And as I read through this the first several times, I go, boy, this is really kind of familiar because it's not necessarily God speaking through the whole thing. And it's, there's someone observing what's going on and reporting on it. And um, this, this, um, even though, you know, journalists today don't necessarily um, are held in high regard, I think a lot of it has to do with this perceived lack of objectivity. But this reporter um, that's observing this court proceedings is trying to be very um, objective and yet very much side with God. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so imagine that 
uh, this, the way you're listening to it is that you are reading about it from the viewpoint of a, of a reporter. And so within the hearing of this reporter who's observing, um, God calls those judges to task and really kind of just calls to the, um, the people's attention that they have failed to live into their calling. And I think, oh my gosh, boy, I'd hate to be one of those judges. <laughs> um, but then, you know, of course, when you really start to reflect on Scripture, you wonder, you know, really who you are, and maybe I'm not the reporter. <laughs> but Eugene Peterson makes it sound like um, those who were put in those positions of power failed um, to use that power to defend the defenseless, to make sure that the marginalized got a fair break, um, to stand up for the powerless. And even though those judges failed in every way to live into God's will, um, the reporter gives this um, sense of almost vindication that the God is standing up for people who the judges have not treated fairly. And boy, good old Eugene Peterson, he does not mince words. Um, and his interpretation, especially of verses 5 to 7, that's where it really got me for today. It's disturbingly apropos for today. Ignorant judges, head in the sand judges, they don't have a clue what's going on. And now everything's falling apart. The world is coming unglued. And then the reporter quotes God. I appointed you judges, each one of you, deputies of the high God. But you betrayed your commission. And now you're stripped of your rank. Busted. It's easy to see our country in these three verses. And what's happening in our um, government, it's happening in our streets. We are deeply, deeply divided politically, morally, ethically. And hard as we try, it doesn't seem like we can find a middle ground. And that just keeps the turmoil, the chaos, stirred up. We demonize one another. We threaten violence against one another. And we do what the psalmist describes. We see that everything is falling apart and the world is coming unglued. Now, that's the more pessimistic way of looking at things. But you got to wonder, where is it going to end? And when is this chaos going to stop? This psalm um, is paired with Sunday's reading from Luke, which is the parable of the uh, Good Samaritan. And we all know that story, right? This man is attacked and beaten and left on the side of the road. Um, and then... People who should not be ignoring him walk on the other side and ignore this man's existence. But one person, just one person, is compelled to act and care for this person. And this Good Samaritan uh, story becomes the object of centuries of wondering just who is my neighbor? Because I think part of the problem today is that we've stopped considering one another as our neighbor. And God challenges us in this psalm to not be the head in the sand kind of person, a believer. Um, we're to do good to everyone, even someone of an opposing political party, a government leader, even a church thief. And so when it seems like there's no hope for humanity, we can find the hope for all of us 
Um, when's God's ways, when God's ways become our ways. And it will be through the living and the loving um, that we become united in God's one great peace. The defenseless and the powerless are encouraged and empowered. Judges live ethically. And we are all able to keep the faith and have hope. And what if the world were filled with good Samaritans? I mean, what a difference that would make in our world. But I have to side on a little more optimism because I really think the world has a lot of good Samaritans in it. We have to be challenged. Um, we have to challenge, sorry, the world, starting with our own faith communities, to think and to act ethically, how to speak truth to power, how to position ourselves as believers in Jesus Christ between the people and the judges. We're there to be that reconciling force. And I'm, I'm not that Pollyanna, that idealist, to think that things would change quickly. But I do know that I personally will be one of those that challenges those in power, that refuses to contribute to the ways of the head-in-the-sand leaders, and that will work toward defending the defenseless and empowering the powerless. And I can't do it alone, I know that. You can't do it alone, but we can make a difference together. We can join in force to be people who don't insist on digging our heads deep into the sand and participate in the reconciliation of our world today. And it's not fun, and it's not easy, but it's good, good work. And I know, we know, God's on our side in the doing. And so, how can we fail? And I don't believe we can. So Psalm 82 is a wake-up call. And I think it's one that we can listen to and respond to in ways that make a difference. So may it be so, in Jesus' name. Amen. And you spoke about uh, the message version being several years old, but the psalm itself is thousands. Oh, my gosh. So I'm thinking, humanity really hasn't changed <laughs> at all in all these years, and that the, judge, the judges need to be judged. Yeah. And held I, accountable. I think about that a lot too, because you can you can really get frustrated and think, oh boy, we're still the same that we were two thousand years ago. But I like to think that without psalms like this, we could be a whole lot That's worse. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> so there's hope for there's hope for us yet. And as we go to prayer, since this psalm speaks of justice, the background music will be a place at the table. Oh, great. And so with everything that's going on in the world, we do need to take the time and invite others to be a place at the table. Amen to that. So let us go to God in prayer. God, we would like to think that people can actually live with one another, that we can actually get along with one another. But we realize that without your guidance, without your spirit, we really can't. We say we love one another, 
but do we really mean it? Mm. So truly, let us embrace the idea of coming together as one. For everyone born a place at the table, mm. for everyone born clean water and bread, yes. shelter a space, a safe place for growing, for everyone born a star overhead. Oh God, we do ask that we are instruments of your peace, that we be the bearers of good news, that we be able to help people actually get a safe place to live. And, oh God, we look around and see the violence, the shootings, the, the chaos, and we wonder, how can this be so? But just as we read in the psalm, even those who are supposed to know better yes. don't. Right. And so we pray that with your wisdom, we can know better, we can do better. And then God will delight when we are creators of justice and joy. Mm -hmm. Yes, God will delight when we are creators of justice and joy all because of your spirit guiding us. We pray for those who are recuperating from illnesses, yes. those who are in a state of depression and need to be lifted out of that, those who are victims of violence and those who perpetrate violence, those who um, think that is a good way to be in society. And while we don't have the answers, oh God, we turn to you because you are all-knowing, all-caring, mm -hmm. and you give us the power and the tools for change in this world. For that, we thank you. Yes. And as we ponder us being change-makers, we also ponder the words that you taught us mm -hmm. in order to be in your image. Mm -hmm saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Our announcements this evening, um, we're going to be reminding you uh, from between now and mid-August that we have a new to you sale, a rummage sale coming up um, August 19th and 20th. So we're seeking donations uh, for that um, fundraiser slash uh, Good Neighbor Day. The first day is our sale and we make our money that day as a fundraiser toward the uplift renovation. And then on Saturday, our Good Neighbor Day, um, we give the stuff away. And objects, um, household items, and, and useful things. Uh, however, no clothes. We can't oh, right. really deal with, with that. Right. But anything else, uh, you're welcome to set that aside for the sale that's coming up. And then also, if you would please mark your calendars, because um, when we did it last year, we really, really could have used some more volunteers. <laughs> so that, uh, yep. it's just... Uh, kind of goes without saying, but if you have some time on the 19th, especially in August the 20th. 19th and the 20th. Right. Friday's focus. Friday, we are going to be looking at Colossians and uh, the first chapter and what Paul has to say to that church and to us. Yes, quite a long greeting too. Yes. So. Well, Paul is, is yeah. known for being <laughs> verbose. He wants to and make so sure we'll break everyone it down and feels see what, <laughs> what he has to say. That's right. The very tail end of um, Eugene Peterson's Psalm 82 was, um, you've got the whole world in your hand, which of course reminded me of the song we don't find in a hymnal, but of course Kevin can pull it off. He's got the whole world in his hand.
Go in peace and good night. Good night.